I tried everything I could try to not go vegan. I, I looked in every corner and I realized that it was the only answer. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Kimberly D'Olivera. I'm the Executive Director with the Toronto Vegetarian Association. I'm joined this morning by Wendy Matthews of Veganuary, and uh, we're so excited to have you here. Education and inspiration has always been at the heart of what we do at the TVA and the heart of what we offer at Veg Food Fest every year. Thank you for joining us about this conversation, about the growth and awareness around veganism, plant-based lifestyles, uh, from an international perspective. We hope to offer you grassroots insights into places and people that those of us here in Canada may not have uh, contact with or insight into um, from a sort of a global media lens. This is our second recording of this discussion and we collected some questions from the previous conversation. We had some technical difficulties last time. And for that reason, we are so excited to have Wendy back with us today. A bit about Wendy. Wendy is the US Director of Veganuary and has been for the past two years. She has a background in nonprofit management and advocacy and has a passion for animals and for vegan lifestyles. Hi, Wendy. Hi, so good to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. So Wendy, your organization, Veganuary, inspired and supports more than half a million people to try vegan in your 2021 campaign. Um, and participants were, uh, came from over 200 countries and territories. Yeah, and you also work with businesses to drive up vegan food options in stores and restaurants and have made veganism more visible and accessible through international, uh, national and international media. So we're going to move on to some questions for you today. Uh, what is Veganuary? How did it get started? So Veganuary is, of course, a combination of the words vegan and January. And what we do is in the name. We're a global organization encouraging people to try vegan in January. And of course, throughout the rest of the year as well. We also offer support and education. So when you sign up for Veganuary, you receive daily emails from us with recipes, tips, meal plans, kind of everything you need to successfully transition to a plant-based diet. And you also get access to a private Facebook group where you can go to have a sense of community and also get advice and support. So in addition to driving participation in the global campaign, we also work with brands restaurants and retailers, and we encourage them to launch new vegan options in January and also to promote their existing vegan options. And the organization started in 2014 in the UK. Uh, it was started by a husband and wife team. And in year one, there were just 3,300 participants. And fast forward to today, as you mentioned, we had 580,000 participants around the globe last year and hundreds of businesses getting involved. So it's been a meteoric rise over the last couple of years. And like drawing upon the success in the UK, we decided to go global. So two years ago, we launched official campaigns in the US, Germany, and Latin America. And this year, we're also adding India. And in addition to that, we have partner organizations running the campaign in Sweden, Italy, France, Switzerland, Singapore, Australia, and South Africa. So we are um, in a lot of places and you know, wanting to globalize even further. And our theory of change is essentially, if you can get someone to focus on trying vegan for 30 days, they're going to start to look at the grocery store shelves a little bit differently. And they're going to start to look at a restaurant menu a little differently and just notice all the amazing plant-based options that are already right there in front of them. And that's why we work with businesses as well, because if they're amplifying and promoting their products in January, it can lead to a much experience for our participants. So then they're going to continue to look for these products and choose plant-based throughout the rest of the year. And our research shows that they do. So thank you so much for that, Wendy. And, uh, you know, you talked about the uh, having more options and how it, the theory of change and how it changes uh, folks' perspective on, on choosing more plant-based options. Um, in researching this discussion, I came across what your organization calls the Veganuary Effect. Is that what you mean? Uh, I'd, I'd love to know how since 2014, uh, Veganuary has changed, let's say, the landscape in England where it originated, the UK. Um, and what about Europe more broadly in the last you know, five years? Sure. So I mentioned some of our sign-up numbers earlier. 
clear. Um, we had a study conducted by Kantar, which revealed that 10 times the amount of people who formally sign up and participate actually get involved and do Veganuary every year. So we call that the Veganuary effect. It's kind of this sprawl that goes beyond you know, even the, the formal campaign and, and kind of seeps into popular culture and into, you know, households across the UK. So much like Movember or Ice Bucket Challenge, January has taken on this virality that folks sometimes, you know, aren't even aware that there's a nonprofit behind it, um, but they are aware of the campaign. So we always encourage people, you know, who are curious to go vegan to actually sign up with us so that they can get the support and encouragement because studies show that if they have the greatest possible experience, they're more likely to stick with it. Um, and we did a survey last year that showed 85% of participants do permanently change their diet after January um, by either staying vegan or at least having their intake of animal products. I mean, Veganuary is absolutely massive in England. Um, major retailers like Sainsbury's and Tesco and really all the, the largest have told us that Veganuary is a bigger marketing moment for them than Christmas at this point. So it's really taken off and you see it in fast food chains like KFC and Burger King and Subway in the UK, um, who all kind of make sure that their biggest plant-based launches coincide with the campaign. So it's got some big momentum and we've seen it unfolding in other European countries like Germany, where Subway and Ikea and even McDonald's participated last year. And I believe the campaign really has the power to move the needle in Canada and in the US as well. And we're really seeing that start to happen. That's extraordinary. That is, it's, it's inspiring. And I, I love to see the snowball effect, the veganuary effect, the idea that, you know, folks making this choice to participate uh, with veganuary for one month a year has so many knock on effects and has now become such an iconic period of time. And, and, uh, you know, the change with, you know, these, uh, these larger retailers in the UK and in Europe more broadly, that's extraordinary. And, you know, we'd love to see that here in Canada. Of course, being in Canada, we are um, forever intertwined with our neighbors to the south. And of course, you are, um, you're running Veganuary in the US. Um, we, we have to ask, what's the current level of interest um, going into, uh, going into the end of the year into this year? What's the level of interest in the States and uh, what trends in, uh, in the movement are you seeing more broadly in the U.S.? Um, how, have two thing, how have things changed in the last two years since you've been um, director there? It's been really, really fun to be at the helm of bringing January to the U.S. We've seen major growth in the last two years, um, even despite you know, what a challenging year and a half it's been. From our launch year in January 2020, to last year's campaign for 2021, signups for the U.S. audience went up 60%, and the number of businesses that are participating more than tripled. So I would attribute this to a few things. Um, first, we had some incredible media buzz in year one around Veganuary. Uh, for our launch year, we had coverage in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal. And we also have had really generous celebrity support. Uh, so Mayim Bialik, Joaquin Phoenix, and Tabitha Brown have all gotten involved, which just helped amplify our message to the U.S. audience. I think, you know, shifting the narrative around veganism is especially important in the U.S., where we know that the term vegan is not always looked on super kindly, um, and consumers tend to prefer plant-based here. So we knew it would be a challenge going in because Veganuary is in the name of the campaign. But what's really interesting is Phonolytics conducted a social listening experiment last year where they looked at different diet-related terms, you know, including vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, and also Veganuary. And it showed that Veganuary by itself has a very positive association among the population in the U.S. on social media, um, much more so than the term vegan alone. So it's kind of taken on its own presence um, that allows people to... So cast aside their stereotypes about what vegan is and, and think of it as this kind of moment in this campaign. Um, and of course, you know, I couldn't speak about our first two years without talking about COVID a little bit. That definitely changed our approach slightly. So last year, we started focusing more on budget recipes um, because so many people were and, and still are struggling financially. Mm -hmm. And we also focused on recipes that could be cooked easily at home because going out wasn't really an option for most of us last year. But it was a pleasant surprise that our numbers were actually 
higher during the height of the pandemic than they were at the same time the previous year. So we did a survey with former participants and we found that one third of people said they were eating more plant-based foods during the pandemic. So I think a lot of the issues that it brought to light really pushed people to make some changes in their diet. And I think this year is going to be our biggest year in the U.S. yet. That's extraordinary. Uh, globally, the U.S. has such a cultural influence. And so I'm, we're all really, really stoked to know that you know, things are picking up. Um, there's so much gold in what you said, Wendy, from the importance of celebrity endorsement to the idea that with the right um, intentions and positioning, you know, overcoming bias towards the word vegan is extraordinarily possible for organizations who, you know, the, the, the debate is always, you know, do you shy away from using that term? Do you embrace it? And it's just wonderful to see that um, the, the brand Veganuary has overcome some of the challenges and some of the, the, the negative potentially connotations um, around the word vegan in the U.S. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and the hope is that you know, that will lead to vegan overall being much more popular and, and trendy. And, and we see that happening. I mean, there are you know, makeup brands and food brands launching new products with vegan labels in the U.S. all the time. So the tide is certainly turning, and I hope we could be a small part of that. That's extraordinary. And so you spoke about your organization growing into countries like India, and I'm curious to know if we zoom out further from sort of Europe, North America, um, you know, your organization is growing into India and to Latin America. Why are you growing in that direction? And um, what is the importance of these countries embracing veganism? Our sure, motivation when we're looking for our next country to expand into is leaning into existing momentum. So we saw a great number of signups in India last year. And we're now eager to, you know, be there in a more formal way to support that audience um, and work on additional resources that are created by, you know, staff members in the country um, who know their audience and can speak to them, you know, in a more useful and direct way. So we are looking to support them through those new resources and also through working on corporate in that country to make sure that there are January corporate launches and new products coming out to support this growing contingent of people in India. Those factors were present for us in India, and we're really, really excited to watch the campaign continue to take off there in the hands of our talented new team members. Um, and I can't speak yet to which countries are next, but I will say that globalization is absolutely continuing to be a, a pillar of what we do and a priority for us. Right. And, you know, you said so many important things, the importance of connecting with people in their own language. Um, from their own cultural lens is incredibly important to translating the importance of this initiative worldwide. And uh, so, so with your experience in, in the States, in, in Europe, and of course, moving internationally, um, looking at that from a sort of global lens, are there different reasons why people choose to participate in Veganuary? Um, and do you focus, obviously you focus on different motivations in different countries. Uh, could you give us maybe a couple of examples of um, some of the reasons why people have said they participated in the program? Absolutely. Doing that demographic research and kind of knowing what motivates our audience is really important to Veganuary. And we do several surveys at sign up and throughout the rest of the year. Um, but we absolutely find that the motivation for participating differs pretty largely from country to country. Um, for example, globally, almost half of the participants surveyed said that animals was their number one reason for trying vegan. But if we look at the U.S. specifically, that's not true at all. Um, we see that here over half of participants are motivated by health reasons. So we do take that into account quite a bit in our marketing. Um, and we differ our strategy country to country and how we try to speak to the audience. Um, environmentalism is also a reason that comes up pretty often. In European countries, environmentalism tends to be a larger motivator than it is in the U.S. So each country manager reviews these surveys and then we cater our campaign messaging to appeal to our audience. Um, you know, for example, European team is leaning more into the environmental messaging this year, whereas in the U.S., you know, I do speak to that and acknowledge it in our press releases. But in general, I seek opportunities to market more of a health focus because we know that's what 
people gravitate towards here. That's so interesting. And uh, in our research as well at the TVA, we've really uncovered that there are such diverse motivations. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's great that Beginuary is such a dynamic and emergent brand as well, that it has the flexibility to speak to what motivates and inspires people to eat more plant-based and uh, try veganism for, for a month um, and beyond, as we know, the Veganuary effect is uh, it contributes to that. So, so that's amazing. And I have to ask, looking ahead, where do you see the status of veganism and plant-based diets in five years, in 10 years? I know this is a tough question, but do you see uh, a, a more of a, a majority of people uh, at least trying this way of this lifestyle? And um, is there a catalyst you can think of that might inspire that change? My goal is to work myself out of a job, right? I want to see a vegan world. And that's what Veganuary is all about, is, is seeing a plant-based future. Um, and companies all over the world are starting to realize this vision as well. And they see that that's the way things are headed and are really investing more and more in vegan innovation. So Unilever announced a target of 1 billion in plant-based sales last year. Plant-based meat market is estimated to be worth 8.3 billion by 2025. The proof is kind of in the numbers, you know, we're headed in that direction. And I think businesses need to adapt to survive essentially at this point. We want to grow Veganuary globally to a similar momentum that we see right now in the UK. And we think that's entirely achievable in the next few years. Um, you know, we do have some work to do in the US, like we talked about, to continue to destigmatize veganism. And that's why the celebrity and influencer support we've seen so far has been so powerful, but also the mainstream brands that we've worked with. You know, we've seen quite a few um, large retailers like Costco did some promotion for Veganuary last year. Hellman's Mayonnaise did vegan recipes on their website for Veganuary. And these non-traditionally vegan brands are getting involved and kind of moving the needle towards more vegan products. So I really think that that's the catalyst. You know, in my mind, adoption by major chains and major retailers is really what moves the needle. And in that, in supporting those moves, which really create a lot of change, you know, in the supply chain and the way that we're... Um, the demand for animal products, we want to make sure we're also supporting mission-driven brands. So we do also work a lot with brands who, you know, do have the, the vegan ethics and share them with us. And we try to find space for both the very large businesses and also the, the smaller independents in our, in our outreach and in our content. That's extraordinary. It really sounds like the change is happening from both sides um, but it's interesting that you say the catalyst is, is really just larger businesses who control so much of our supply chains from products to food to commodities that, and more broadly are, are really starting to um, take notice and make changes in their offerings. So it's a little bit of supply. It's a little bit of demand. Um, yeah. but, you know, that, that, and that's, that's really, really interesting. And um, let's be honest, the, the smaller uh, sort of coming from the grassroots folks, in my experience, are the innovators. They're the folks that are, are yeah. making inroads and, and really experimenting and trying things and um, creating new products, better products. And then, of course, um, you know, the larger companies come in and, and um, you know, see that innovation and, and run with it. And Absolutely. Um, we have a few questions that we captured from our last go around. And the folks uh, answer, ask these questions via an Instagram poll and also uh, during our brief live together last time. So I'd love to ask a few questions from the audience. And sure. the first one is, uh, what do you think contributes to the UK having such a strong vegan activism scene? Uh, what lessons do you think that we can learn and apply to Canada? I just wanted to pause and thank everyone who tried to tune in last time. And also thank you for following up with those questions after the fact. And I'll try to answer as many as I can. That's a great question. I've been really inspired by the activism in the UK. And it's something I've been watching for years, even long before I started at Veganuary. One is it's a slightly more homogenous culture, I think, than we have in the US. You know, we're very segmented here uh, by region and by state. And so I think sometimes it takes a little longer for things to catch fire here or for ideas to change. You know, often um, certain states, at least when we're speaking, you know, about legal advocacy, things often start in California or New York to turn the tides for animals and then they kind of trickle across the country. So 
Um, there's a little bit more of a wave that needs to happen, I think, in the U.S. And, you know, that's not something we can can be inspired by or change based on the UK. It's just, it's just different climates in each country. Um, but I think that there's more of a openness to talking about animal issues in the UK as well, I've noticed. So the population isn't as put off by, for example, posts about factory farming or kind of opening their eyes to what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think that that comes with time. Um, you know, not to say that Veganuary is responsible for all of that by any means, but I do think having a, a major vegan campaign in the public eye for six years now has opened people's hearts and minds a little bit. And hopefully with more time in the U.S. and, you know, as vegan campaigns like the work that TVA is doing continue to grow in Canada, I think people will start to change their minds more. So, Wendy, uh, the next question we have from the folks that joined us for our last discussion is that Veganuary definitely seems like a bigger thing in the UK and possibly in the US. And they're wondering why it doesn't seem as big yet in Canada. It's a good question. And I will just start by saying that we have a lot of organic pickup in Canada. So we do see a significant number of followers on our social platforms and signups coming from Canada every year. Um, and we appreciate that if anyone listening is a, a pleasure. Um, we also see a lot of businesses in Canada really interested in Veganuary. So this year in particular, I've heard from tons of Canadian businesses. And I would say you should expect to see some Veganuary campaigns happening in retail in Canada this year. But why we don't have a larger presence is essentially just because we don't have a, a partner campaign or a fully staffed campaign in Canada yet. Um, you know, given the momentum there, I would say Probably some more energy will be put into Canada from January soon. So stay tuned. Awesome. That's exciting. And you're growing so fast into so many regions. And, um, you know, our, our audience is here for you. The Toronto Vegetarian Association is here for you. And we're excited to see that Veganuary is expanding into Canada. And, you know, it, it's, it's growing. So stay tuned, everyone. Momentum is happening. And, you know, we really believe in this initiative. And that's why we're having this discussion with Wendy today. So, Wendy, if we can turn to a little bit more of a personal question. Um, our audience would love to know, how long have you been vegan? I've been vegan for about 11 years now. Uh, I don't have a vegan anniversary. It happened a little bit more organically, so I don't have an exact date, but I, it's been at least a decade and, and probably going on 11. Um, I'd be happy to share my why I'm vegan story. It's a little bit of a long one, but if you're up for it. Um, Absolutely. I, you know, I think that we, we'd love the highlights. Um, you know, this is, this is insp inspiration. And I know that I'm, I, uh, our audience would love to hear it. Sure. So I grew up in a pretty all-American, you know, meat and potatoes family. My dad was a hunter. We ate meat most nights, if not every night. And I hadn't ever heard the term factory farming until I went away to college. Um, I read Michael Pollan's The Omnivore's Dilemma, and I started learning more about our food system. And, you know, he ultimately recommends eating cage-free and local and free range. And so for a while, that's what I did. And I thought I was doing my part um, and I, you know, found a local farm and, and started realizing some of those labels like cage free, like free range can't be trusted and, and don't mean what you think, you know, the animals still aren't treated in the way that you would want them to be. So I went one level further and I said, okay, I want to interact directly with my food. And I got a job volunteering on a pig and chicken farm. And I went out on the weekends, spent time with the animals, helped clean and and then I would go home with eggs and bacon and I thought I was doing it right this is the way you know to, to eat animal products and then I just realized that some things had to happen even on this beautiful local organic farm the you know, best case scenario farm that I was totally uncomfortable with um there were they were still you know I won't go into the gory details, but the, some of the practices of the industry are still very much present on those kind of farms because they have to happen animals are commodified so I had a light bulb moment I got to the end of the tunnel and I realized vegan was the way to go um, if I really wanted to align my values with my choices and you know sometimes I'm embarrassed because you meet people I, I meet people in my job who are 10 11 years old and have already made these realizations and already have this huge compassion for animals and I tried 
everything I could try to not go vegan. I, I looked in every corner and I realized that it was the only answer. Um, so I have a lot of compassion for people who are still early on in their journey. And I'm, I'm so happy that I get to be in this position to help people transition. That's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. And, you know, Wendy, I see much correlations between your story and mine. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I consciously heard the word vegan in my reality until I was 31. Um, and, you know, growing up here in, uh, outside of Toronto to parents who immigrated here from South America, um, meat every day. My, my dad's expression growing up was it's not a meal if there's no meat. Uh, so, <laughs> um, definitely had my three times a, a day animal products. I'm sure every day drinking a gallon of milk would be no yeah. meal for me as a kid, of course, going into, you know, my life as an adult, moving, moving away, um, learning a little bit more about um, environment, health. I was somebody that went, uh, became very passionate about food sovereignty and supporting local producers. And I was the, the woman at the, the markets learning about, uh, you know, uh, taking, treading lightly on the earth and, and just had always had a sort of environmental passion. I, I went from being an omnivore to being a vegan, but I was an omnivore that was only buying lamb from the local farmer and farm eggs and, and, you know, only butter when the mother cow supposedly didn't need the surplus for, for her calf. And so I, I got to that point and I, I sort of felt like I had walked that, that path. And, and I just knew that it, you know, something, something was still wasn't right. And it was actually in uh, doing a uh, master's of business administration with an environmental specialization that I really started to uncover the broader markets, supply chains, the economy, yeah. the economy of animal exploitation, and seeing how it was sort of untenable in every way. And uh, that's, that's when the, the idea that, you know, you can eat plants and, and be well and, you know, animal protein was not uh, necessary for health. Um, Well-planned vegan diets were, were extraordinarily healthy. That it was one of those quintessential aha moments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized very, very deeply that this was for me and that I couldn't participate in the system any longer um, on any level. And so I stepped away and uh, that was almost seven years ago. So oh. I, I love, I love that you've been vegan for 11 years. I love speaking to people who both are at the start of their journey. Um, you never know when that's going to click for you. You never know when that moment's going to be, you know, for yourself, Wendy, you were at the farm with the animals and it still yeah. took a little while to click. And, you know, for me, again, I was a bit older. I had already sort of, you know, gone down this path so long before, you know, I had that moment. Uh, I have so much compassion as well for folks that are on the journey. And I always joke that, you know, folks that care about their health and care about animal welfare and the environment who are, you know, they're already on the path. They maybe don't yeah. realize it potentially, but yeah. you know, on the path and, you know, it's just the support and taking that next step. Um, and so I love that there's that synergy in the work that you do and the work that we try to do every day at the TVA. Yeah, I love the parallels in our story. It's really interesting. I, I also was omnivore to vegan. I kind of skipped the vegetarian stuff a bit. And I was also an environmental studies major, which is what brought me to reading that book that inspired me. So, And we both did a lot of somersaults before we came to our ultimate conclusion. And then we're so inspired that we moved to this work. And it's definitely a journey and a process. And you don't have to do it overnight. Yeah. And there's infinite pathways. Uh, just keep going, everyone. Um, and, and uh, you know, thank you so much, Wendy, for, for sharing your story. Um, course, it's, it, it matters. And, and so our last question from the audience um, that we're going to chat about today is they want to know how we created a career in the vegan world. I think that's an awesome question. So how did you find yourself as U.S. director? And was this your first job um, in this particular field and promoting plant-based and vegan lifestyles? This is not my first job in this field. Um, my first job came very freshly off of that experience I mentioned when I you know, had this light bulb moment, decided to go vegan. And then as people often do when they have a new interest, I just voraciously started reading and watching everything I could find that had to do with veganism. And I stumbled on the book Farm Sanctuary by Jean Bauer. 
And I was reading through it and I realized that the flagship farm sanctuary location was only about 45 minutes from where I grew up, which was crazy. I'd never heard of it. I had no idea that this huge vegan institution was rooted in basically my hometown. Um, so I went up to visit and I just fell in love. And for anyone who doesn't know the organization, it's an animal rescue and sanctuary located in upstate New York. And I just wanted to be a part of it. So I applied for an entry level job as an event coordinator, um, thinking I would do it for a year or so just to explore that world a bit before I went off and got my you know, real job, which I always thought I was going to get into journalism. Um, but I found that I loved the nonprofit world. I loved going home every day, feeling really good about what I had done and what I was a part of. I was also working in a barn called the Staff Barn, basically on a farm where I got to go spend time with animals. So I loved it. And I ended up staying there for about 10 years. But I found that you know the how is what really inspired me. I loved helping friends who wanted to transition. I love cooking for people and showing them how to make simple swaps. And so I became more inspired by that type of advocacy. And when I saw the opening at Veganuary, which is an organization I'd followed for a long time, I decided to go for it. And I'm really glad I did. It's been, uh, been wonderful to be a part of it. So my career, I think it's hard to give advice on because it was a bit meandering, but I think that for me, you know, just follow your passion. Um, Take, take something that maybe doesn't necessarily seem like the right fit if it's in the right organization and then find your place there. And I, I think putting your foot in the door will help you see all the opportunities that are available to you. That's a great story. I, I um, you know, again, there's, there's so many pathways, right? And, uh, you know, again, I've been encouraged to share my, my uh, experience in this as well. And I, I'll say that it, it was equally um both intentional and, and sort of, you know, opportunities came up and finding my way. Um, but, but certainly I, I started in sort of the corporate side of things in my twenties and had a realization. That's why I went back to school to do uh, a, a master's with an environmental specialization because I got to 29 or so and um, um, hitting 30 and realized that I, I wasn't living in line aligned with my values and, I wanted to explore what else was out there. And so after, after completing uh, my studies, I moved into the nonprofit sector. And uh, of course, it, by then I was already vegan and I was just, you know, worked with a, an incredible organization here in Toronto and looking around me, it was a, a, basically an incubator for social impact entrepreneurs and startups mm -hmm. and charities and you know, was a really beautiful and inspiring space for, for folks who wanted to make a difference. And that's where I sort of, I, I landed there after, after I, kept, I finished school. And I was really surprised that there were so many people thinking about, you know, um, health and the world and people and the environment and spending their days creating solutions. And there seemed to be so few people that were, were vegan um, or vegetarian, um, you know, so I think as the years went on, I, I really realized that in terms of this broader, you know, um, ecosystem of, of impact-based organizations that maybe there was a, a way for me to use my skills to particularly bring this particular type of um, social benefit um, broadly uh, to, to the space. And so that's sort of how I came uh, upon this opportunity with the TVA. So I hope that answers our audience's question. It is definitely a journey. And, uh, you know, there's lots of opportunities in the nonprofit sector, if that's something that you're interested in as well. I would encourage you to check it out. Absolutely. So two comments for you, Wendy, that I thought were awesome. Uh, one of our previous audience members commented that the resources from Veganuary are super helpful. And they were so inspired when they saw Veganuary signs at restaurants all over the UK. So I'm so happy to hear that. And, you know, I obviously am biased, but I really feel like our team puts a lot of heart into the resources we create. You know, a lot of our team members are people who have been vegan for just a few years. So they know what it feels like to not know where to turn or not quite be sure what to put in a cake you're baking. And 
really love imparting that to people who are trying to make the same changes. Um, and I learned things too. I was just editing our 2022 pledge series and the staff member who wrote it suggested putting your milk into your mug before your coffee if you don't want it to separate, which I'd never heard before and I've been trying it and you know what, it works. So I think that, you know, just having a community around you is a great way to find some new advice, even if you've been at it for a while. Amazing. And another amazing comment, Veganuary is how I ended up going vegan. That's awesome. That really makes me smile. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad we could have a part in your journey and, and thank you for sharing that. The, the impact of choosing vegan to eat vegan for one day Imagine that over a lifetime and think about the amazing impact that Veganuary is having. Wow. That person went vegan because of Veganuary. And, mm-hmm. and that, that was 30 days of, of positive impacts for themselves, for the animals, for the planet. And now that's going to be magnified over the course of a lifetime and all the people around them and that they influence as well. So super cool. I had to share that with you. I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much. So how can we get involved? Um, how do we get involved in Veganuary and take the pledge? So you can sign up for Veganuary anytime throughout the year. It doesn't have to just be January. Um, whenever you sign up, you get our 31 days of support emails. But uh, if you've seen this video and you're you know, deciding that, yes, you want to join us for January specifically, you can sign up now. But on the sign up form, just select January 1 as your start date. And that'll put you into the class of 2022. Um, you know, and I suspect that a lot of people who watch this will already be vegan or on their way to vegan. And I would just say, I'd still encourage you to sign up. Um, the larger the number of signups we have every year, the better case we can make to corporates that there's a huge demand for vegan products. So it always helps to have, you know, as many people uh, as are interested sign up with us and you'll receive some really fantastic recipes and also special offers and price discounts from companies. So we can all use a little refresh every now and then, and I'd encourage you to sign up anyways. Um, so our sign up is at veganuary.com. Um, there's a big button on the homepage that says try vegan. Just click that and you can get involved and definitely follow us on social media as well. you be part of the fun and kind of see what we're up to. Amazing. And we will be sure to provide all of those links in the notes of this discussion for everyone watching who's interested in learning more. Uh, definitely check out their website and, and of course, pledge if you'd like. And, uh, you know, we here at the TVA are really encouraging you to do that. And we're going to do everything we can to, uh, um, you know, make Veganuary, uh, you know, bring Veganuary and help it grow in Canada this year. Um, so, Wendy, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, it's always wonderful to connect with you. Thank you for the amazing work that you're doing as well. Oh, you're so welcome. And, you know, I just thought of one more plug I should give for getting involved, um, which is sure. if, you have a, if you have a workplace uh, that wants to get involved as a team, do workplace challenge. So I'm very happy to send toolkits to anyone listening who's interested. Or if you have a business, if you work um, in any sort of food or beauty sector and, you know, are offering vegan products, Feel free to get in touch. The email is uscorporate at veganuary.com. That'll take you straight to me. And I also uh, am the person who coordinates with Canadian businesses. So, um, yeah, thanks for having me. I love the work TVA does. And I'm so happy to, to have the chance to talk with you today. And I thank you for having me on. Thank you so much, Wendy. And again, everyone, um, what we've talked about today, the, the links that Wendy mentioned will be in the description uh, below this video. Wendy, thank you so much. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, Have a great day.